Yo, yo, guys, can't be safe from off target surviving. Prepping the topic in this video is going to be my urban survival kit on my herb and get home bag, whatever you want to call it. Basically, in a moment, I don't really have any major reason to have this set up. I've just set up this kit to give you guys out there some idea of how I would set one up. And this is pretty much would be if I was working at the moment. I'm not. This would be something that I could actively take from and to work. So in the UK, the laws are really strict on what you can carry on your person. So there's really only one item in here that I'd probably have to leave in my locker at work. Or if I did have a vehicle, I could leave in the back of my vehicle and it'd be no problem. But oh, my, oh, except for the one item which I'll actively say, this is the item that I'd have to leave in my uh in my car everything else is pretty much stuff you can carry in your person and no one could really say you can or cannot carry this item so today's topic like i said urban survival kit or urban get home bag so basically let's get into the bag first so the concept behind the bag uh, was the gray man concept the gray man theory whatever you want to call it i want to be in an urban environment it could be any situation it could be riots it could be some kind of take over by the government whatever and i just need to get back to my house as quick as as quick as possible to get my bug out kit and get to my bug out location pretty much where i live if i was at the maximum distance which was one town over going one way or one town over going the other way really there's only two towns really close to me it would take me a maximum of about four hours to get back to my house maybe a couple more maybe a couple less depending on the situation and what's happening that could just be time that i could maybe have to take up 12 other people or to stop and hide but pretty much if i was just to straight beeline it back to my house it would take me about four hours if i just went as quick as possible that would be the most it would take so concept is the gray man, gray man concept i want to be a hidden i want it to seem like something that an average joe is going to carry so i just picked a black satchel bag if I do find it, I will put a link in the description down below, but it was a one-time purchase. I literally picked this up for like £5. Uh, if I do find the same bag, I will put a link in the description down below. If not, just type in black uh, satchel bag and something similar will come up. It does have some waterproofing in it, so that's good. But pretty much, it was perfect for my needs. It fits everything in. It does look a bit bulky and a bit misshaped. It doesn't really look too streamlined, but pretty much, if I just pack stuff in a little bit more carefully, uh, you know, which I probably have to do anyway because I'm going to get everything out. Uh, it won't look as misshaped but it still anyway looks like something that an average person would carry if you had some kind of tactical bag on some kind of military style bag something that stands out oh that person's got survival stuff on people who are panicking maybe looters might still get this people who are robbing people taking any items it might just be robbing you know you you put your new trainers that you've got in a sports direct bag or whatever you know stuff like that it could still be taken but <clears throat> no one's going to really kind of guess i have survival equipment stuff to keep me alive in this bag in an environment so there's one item in this that uh sorry one item that isn't in this and maybe would have in it depending on if there's some kind of high level threat of a, an imminent attack is a gas mask i could add in one of my gp5 gas masks are really small and packed in a filter it would it would just be you know rearranging some stuff and plus my edc uh, case in here if i had all that stuff on my person it probably my edc case wouldn't be in here so that could definitely be where I could put a filter for a gas mask. But that item would only be in there if it was actively some kind of terrorist threat. Because I really wouldn't want to be walking on my person and get caught with a gas mask. That might raise some questions. In the UK, there's some weird laws around that. But yeah. So let's pretty much get to what's in the bag. So, like I said, black satchel bag. It does a trick. So we'll go over the two outside compartments first. So in here, we have pretty much stuff that I would want to maybe put on my person. So if it was raining really bad... For whatever reason, we just have an emergency poncho here. Also, could be used for signaling if I was in some kind of high rise building or a high building and I need to signal for help. I could just hang it out of the window or I could use it for signaling in other situations. Then, in here, we just have a pair of pretty much they're just some, I think, gardening gloves, but they're really they're, they're fairly tough and stuff like that. Basically, if I needed to move debris off for some reason, and maybe I didn't want to leave my fingerprints on something, uh, really, that would be I probably wouldn't have to do that, but they could be used for that just to keep my identity concealed maybe i have to defend myself i don't know what the case could be but pretty much they could be used to stop your fingerprints you know as any gloves will do or they could just be there to basically help you move debris and stuff like that so the next item we have in here is a bandana so pretty much multiple uses for this it can be used to filter out water it can be used for concealment loads of uses for this sorry for burp then uh so yeah so loads of different uses for bandana it can be used for banding material loads of different things so that's everything in that first compartment there. So secondary compartment, first off, we have my EDC first aid kit. This could be on me, but if not, it would just be in this front satchel here. So pretty much, I'll show you what's in here quick. I've got a really uh, 
main first aid kit now, but this is the one that's immediately on my person. Uh, so a bandage, some gloves, first aid, first aid plasters, some alcoholic wipes, a couple of uh, different couple of safety pins, and then just a couple of paracetamol for painkillers. Pretty simple, pretty small, just something for personal use. that in properly in a bit so next item we've got in here is my multi-tool so this has got a blade in it in the UK you have to be really careful with blades but it is under three inches so it is legal for me to carry and plus it has a load of different uses on it as well so there's my EDC multi-tool it's got blade on it like I said there it's under three inches so that's completely legal to carry all the other stuff do you know it's just Pretty much what you find on an average multi tool. I'm not going to go over that too much because it's been in a lot of my recent videos. My Highlander multi tool. Next item we'll go out here is pretty much the only five star method I have other than the light in here is just waterproof matches. They take up next to no room. I thought, do you know what? Just in case I end up in some kind of suburb, sub wilderness environment, sorry, I have some way to start a fire other than the lighter. Uh, we have some water purification tablets. And because I am in an urban environment, we do have a silcock here. Basically, you can use this to find spigots. I think I'm saying that right, but basically taps on the side of buildings or in uh, water plants or stuff like that. And basically, you can use these with the screwdriver that's on the uh, multi-tool. Basically, I can use this to simply get water into my water bottle, which is in there. I'll show you that later. And 10 purification tablets. So the next item we've got in here is just a headlight, it's just a simple cheapo one, I don't even think it's waterproof, but basically if I was in an urban environment and maybe it was night time, it would just give me a hand free option, we do have my EDC flashlight in here as well, but pretty much would just give me a hands free option basically if I needed to do stuff, you know, move around at night, there's a few different settings, it's got a small little red light on it and then it's got a blinking red light, pretty much just a standard headlight, uh, that's everything in that. So, a couple of items in here. First of all, we'll go over this. This is basically a secondary bag. Maybe I need to get gather more items, maybe food. Maybe if I'm out there for a bit longer and I just need, maybe I need to go into a store, maybe I could stash this in an alleyway, keep it safe, and I needed to go loot a store, which I don't condone in a normal situation, but this is in a worst case scenario. Do you know, it's a global crisis, everything's gone to shit. Uh, lack of a better word, sorry about swearing. Pretty much, I could just use this to store food, stuff like that in it. If it needed to just get in and out of shop quick. Next item we'll go over is... A few items in here. Uh, it's just another bit of personal protection, personal protection equipment. It's just a pair of safety goggles. So basically, maybe there's debris going everywhere. This isn't going to protect me from bullets or anything like that. But basically, from contaminants could be in the air. Maybe there could have been some kind of attack and there's you know, debris falling. Stuff like that, you know, dust, it's just going to protect my eyes, keep me safe. Same with a bandana, it's going to protect my throat a little bit, you know, my inners from outside contaminants. Uh, next in here, for communication, we do have my handheld receiver. This is my most high-tech one. I do have the uh, headphone adapter somewhere in as well, I'll show you later. But I keep this ready in that compartment there to get to that has got waterproof lining as well. And this is already waterproof itself. So... Mode. Pretty standard handheld receiver. Important to have communication as you have two other handheld receivers at home so I could, could could communicate with the people who I live with. But as well as that, I do will also obviously have my phone. Uh, as you can see, it's just a standard phone. It's some Samsung. I don't know what which one exactly. But anyway, uh, for communication, obviously the phone towers could be down, so that's why I always say have a handheld receiver in every kit, whatever you make. So you're always going to need to communicate with someone if you have someone at home you care about. Uh, and also another thing I've added here is a secondary SIM card, so they're both on different networks, so one that's in is on gift gap and that is on free, so that's just got a little bit of credit left on it, basically enough to make a few calls, and this one's topped up fully, so basically maybe if one network is down, the other one might not, depending on where the satellites are, also that could be quite useful in the world environment as well, you know if you're just wild camping, putting a secondary SIM card in just in case one has signal and one maybe has one bar instead of no bars, so cell phone. So last item in here. This is the one that I said might have to stay in my locker at work if I was working. Uh, pretty much, I'd only I'd only keep this in my locker uh, because if I do if I did get caught with this on me, I could definitely maybe get arrested. Uh, do you know for maybe I'm, I'm planning to burgle someone, which I'm not. 
But the point of this basically is, uh, if I need to get into a shop, maybe it isn't it? Maybe I'm out there extended period of time. Maybe it turns out that I'll never be able to get back to my house uh, for whatever reason, and I'm going to need to find supplies. Whether that be more survival equipment, maybe that be food, maybe that be water, whatever reason, I'm, I could use this to pretty much just get into shops that have maybe been boarded up. Like I said, this is in a worst case scenario. This item would pretty much be used for. But if there was riots, this could also be used for self-defense. If there's people trying to hurt people all over, pretty much this would be a very effective self-defense item. It's a blunt object you could simply hold and you could simply strike someone with that bit there. I'm not saying doing that. I don't condone using it. I don't condone doing that in an everyday situation. Like I said, these are for a hypothetical scenario. So yeah, so pretty much a crowbar or a small pry bar, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure that's everything in there. Yep. So now let's go over the main compartment. So the first thing you'll see in here is my water bottle. And the reason I picked this one, this is the uh, Euro Hike water bottle. It's pretty much this. It looks like something you'd have if you was going to the gym or something an average person would carry. Kind of looks like what you had in your pack lunch as a kid. It doesn't stand out as a uh, tactical, military style uh, water bottle. It just looks like an average water bottle that any person is going to carry. Uh, with it being see through, it's not metal, so I can't directly boil water in it. Pretty much, other than filtering out water with the uh, bandana there, this is my only way of getting purified water. But in an urban environment, a majority of the water that's going to be bottled or is going to be inside some, some kind of water container, you know, external or, or, or internal to the building, if I'm saying that right, uh, is going to be safe to drink. So, my water bottle. So the next item we'll get out is my main first aid kit because obviously a first aid kit I think is important in any kit you have. So I've just got one here, it is pretty much yourself. How I would set it up, you could maybe add in items, take out items, it's up to you. But we'll show you what's in here now. So first of all, we have, we'll go up from this side. So here I have two tourniquets, just paramedic tourniquets in blue so they stand out. They're still sealed, so they're nice and secure. We have, I do have some more hand sanitizer in the UDC, but I also do keep some hand sanitizer in there just so you can keep wounds and your hands clean. Also can be used as fire starting stuff, this apparently not set out, but I read somewhere that it can be. Uh, obviously, I've got some plasters in there, a lo load of different sizes, plasters or band-aids. And then I've got some stuff underneath the cold compression pack there. Uh, just some alcoholic sanitation wipes. Then in this side here we have a pair of sanitary gloves, basically just a pair of medical gloves to put on so we don't put any contaminants in wounds. We have eight paracetamol, 500 milligrams. We have an emergency blanket, it can be used for signaling as well but also can be used for loads of different things. Uh, we have some medical tape, get it out, there as you can see. Then we do have the cold compression pack which is pretty much just to suit aches or pains. So now we'll go over here, so here we have a couple of uh, iPad things, there's the one that fell out, just fell out, something on it in the bag when I was putting stuff in it, but anyway, yeah, so that can be used as goss or it can be used as an iPad. We have a sterile wound dressing there, basically just a longer bandage, I think. Oh, there's the other little iPad thing. Uh, three bandages there, just a little bit smaller than that. Then we have two more pairs of sanitary gloves and some paper clips to secure down the bandages as well as the medical tape. Uh, in here we have a pair of scissors, pretty much just for cutting bandages down to size and a pair of tweezers for removing uh, splinters and stuff like that. Then we just have a couple of triangle tourniquets in there as well. That's pretty much everything inside my first aid kit. We'll just put it there like that in a moment and we'll sort that out in a little bit. So next thing we'll get out here is just cordage. Obviously, say it's always important to have cordage in the wilderness or of an environment. So just a good length of cordage there. Lots of different things you can do with that. Set up booby traps. Use it to secure doors, secure things down. So maybe hoist, maybe not yourself off the ground, but you could hoist, you know, your kit off the ground or something. Whatever you might need to do in an urban environment. Uh, have a spare pen. Always good to have a spare pen in an urban environment. You never know when you're going to need one. Uh, then we have my EDC kit, so this is where I keep on my EDC, but um, a lot of these things would probably be on my person. So in here we have my writing rain notepad, 
basically in an urban environment if it is something like rights i might need to write something down and maybe my phone isn't in use if my phone still does have some charge though i could use that to record whatever's going on but pretty much if i just wanted to make a note of you know something i remembered about the person to report to the police later there's a write in the rain notepad or i could just write down other things uh, so i do have a portable charger in here and there is a couple of wires there's one of the wires and there's the other to go with a portable charger i'll get that out in a second uh, so we have my everyday face mask because of what's going on in the world at the moment it's getting a little bit better we have my watch tactical pen so a secondary pen but also can be used as a self-defense item because it is a pen you know you have a, a logical reason to carry this but if someone was causing harm to you, you could hold it like this and simply use this as a strike end and that probably uses i think that can be used as a glass breaker as well and also the pen end could be used as a self-defense as well basically best thing you want to know always a good thing to know for self-defense a point like like do you know when you punch someone with your fist it actually be more effective if you have the chance to elbow them because that point puts a lot more pressure into that target puts a lot more impact damage so that's why a lot of these self-defense items are a point instead of just a blunt object it puts a lot more damage and direct energy into that person a little button compass which is the only compass i have in this kit not really a major thing uh, i'd maybe have a map but i really wouldn't need one i've lived where i've lived my whole life i could get i could get back to my house with my eyes closed but yeah so compass uh, spare battery for my EDC torch, which is here. The one that's already in it. There's a portable little power bank, just enough to charge my phone once or twice. I do have a couple of different things that basically if I was with someone who needed to charge your phone as well. My EDC hand sanitizer, my glass breaker or seatbelt cut basically was in a vehicle and for some reason it went down. I use that to get out safely. Emergency whistle would definitely be on my person, same with a glass breaker and a tactical pen would definitely be items that would be on me. <laughs> Basically emergency whistle, sorry for that deafened you a bit guys. Uh, a little bit of duct tape which can be used for repairing kit or can be used to start fires. Uh, my EDC windproof little lighter. And then obviously on my wallet with personal information about caching. Stuff like that. So I think there's one other little compartment in here guys with a few things in. Let me just make sure nothing's fell out of the bottom, it hasn't. Let's just go over the last compartment. Trying to find a little sip, it's tiny. Uh, so it's kind of a little hidden compartment, it is hard to find. So in here I have the adapter for my headphones. Sorry for my uh, for my handheld receiver. I have a charging port, basically USB thingy. The USB plug for if I was in a, a, a building, bloody hell, England is not my language. Sometimes you know that guy. I needed to charge up my phone, or we needed to put, or needed to charge up my power bank. Uh, we do also have in here some zip ties. There's a load in there, but I'll just get a couple out, which can be used for repairing kit and can be used to restrain someone if they're trying to cause harm to you. Uh, in here, we also do have. Uh, headphone adapter for my phone basically i want to be i want to seem as low profile as possible so this would probably be on my person straight away but i do just keep it in there when it's not in use and that pretty much i could just have my headphones in i could still speak to someone you know on the phone but people will notice i had a phone out uh, so for food all we have in here is some scottish oak case which are high in, which oh is high in fiber and protein and obviously there's a lot, lot and obviously there's lots of other goodies in there but yeah just some scottish oak cakes for a bit of food if i needed it uh then we have some toilet paper obviously what that's used for if you needed it also be used to start a fire uh we have some spare batteries for my headlight they're just three spare batteries and then there's just the rest of the zip ties and that is everything inside of my urban get home bag or urban survival kit pretty much they are all the items guys they are all the items i carry pretty much that's it if you have anything to comment let me know in the description down below if you were taking any items out add any in let me know that's more or less it peace not in the description down below in the comments peace